Hello everybody, what is going on? It's Brian with you from the Game Common, and today we are playing some Surviving Mars. So, this game just launched a couple of minutes ago, and I'm excited to hop right in and get a new series going. So, if you know nothing about Surviving Mars, it's a game from the publisher Paradox Interactive, who's most famously known for games like Crusader Kings 2, Stellaris, uh, EU4, City Skylines, basically every game that I love playing. Um, so, they're not the the ones who actually designed it they're publishing it the guys who actually designed this are the same guys who ended up doing the tropical series um tropical one two three four all those fun games so essentially what surviving mars is is basically a sci-fi city building game so think city skylines or maybe tropical but on mars and since it's a paradox game it's gonna have a bunch of complex elements that are gonna seem extremely complicated but really aren't too bad once you start understanding how the whole game works so I'm gonna say these first couple screens are pretty confusing just kind of stick with it I've been watching a bunch of coverage recently So I'm a little confident at least with the beginning of the game We'll see how well we can actually do but we're gonna go ahead and hop in a new game We could do easy start essentially easy start just basically gets you through the next couple of screens without having to um, uh, Basically get overwhelmed with everything that's going on, but I kind of want to make my own custom start So the number one thing to notice from here is we have a difficulty bonus So every single thing we change here is going to change our difficulty bonus I think 20% might be the actual easiest start um, so we'll probably go a little bit higher than that but anyways so uh, to begin with we actually get to pick a mission sponsor so remember we're going to colonize Mars so the question is who is actually sponsoring that mission right now we have the International Mars mission which gives us a starting uh, rockets of five um, they're the patron country or organization standing behind the Mars mission grants funding research and other benefits um, the difficulty is very easy you can see the funding is 30 30,000 million so something like 30 billion uh, research per soul 300 you get 25 million for uh, if you sell rare metals and you get 200 starting applicants um, they also start with a large rocket payload colonists never get earth sick food supply from passenger blah 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 okay so we can actually switch this from international Mars to like the US for example but you'll notice our funding goes from 30 billion down to 8 billion which is a problem uh, the Blue Sun Corporation uh, gives us 10 million and so all of these I don't know if these are actually in difficulty but I imagine Paradox Interactive is going to be the hardest it says difficulty hard they're easy 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 uh, India's normal 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 okay space Y I'm assuming is probably similar to SpaceX they start with five rockets which is awesome however let's see what drone hubs start with additional drones 50% cheaper whatever we're gonna actually start with the international Mars mission we're gonna go on easy mode this time I'll probably end up looking through all these some other time uh, when I'm not here uh, but then here's the other thing we can actually change our commander profile the mission commander grants various benefits to the colony so right now because we're a rocket scientist we start with an extra rocket and we get co2 jet propulsion which unlocks the shuttle hub which is very very powerful now the thing is we're already starting with five rockets so we don't really need to start with another rocket so we probably are going to go with a different commander profile now I think this is actually one of the easier ones so I'm assuming actually no the inventor is actually uh, lowers our difficulty let's see the inventor gives us drones are gradually optimized to work and construct faster until soul 100 oh nice and then autonomous hubs drones no longer require power or maintenance that's actually really good too fuel production increased by 25% okay hydro start with water deposits revealed drones consume 25% less water okay so basically it just makes water a little bit easier to come by doctor minimum comfort for birth lower by 15 and don't know about that I don't know if we want to start popping out a bunch of babies that may or may not be good psychologist colonists recover five additional sanity while resting in their home politician all funding gains are increased by 20% and then we get Martian patients a repeatable tech that grants funding okay futurist gives us breakthrough techs or research 30% faster and then autonomous sensors they're no longer require power maintenance that seems good Service comfort, hanging gardens, okay, astrologists start with rare metal, extractor, bonus. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan necessarily of any of these others. I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to end up going with, which one was I just looking at? Futurist? I do like the idea that breakthrough techs are research quicker and sensor towers. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. Maybe, maybe. I mean, honestly, I hate to do inventor 
because I do want a little bit harder difficulty, maybe we'll just pick a harder starting location. So autonomous drones no longer require power maintenance. Yeah, we're going to roll with that. And then we get to pick our colony logo. So we have all these wonderful logos that we can go from. Don't panic. Uh, let's do the final countdown because, you know, hey, that's one of my favorite songs. And then we get to pick a mystery. So this mystery is essentially kind of the story for your colony. I think we're just going to go random to begin with, and I'll have no idea. The only issue with going random is I don't know if eventually I'll be able to tell, oh, I was doing the dredgers. So they don't actually really tell you what the mystery is about. So wildfire. The worst pandemic in modern history was Spanish flu. Today, uh, with how interconnected the world is, it would spread faster. So I wonder if this is probably maybe a flu or some sort of um, disease is hitting Earth, or maybe even your colony. I don't know. We'll do random, and we'll see what we end up getting. So we actually have a difficulty bonus of 10 percent right now so we're gonna start with 30 billion dollars we're gonna get 300 research per day uh rare metals at well yeah rare metals price we're gonna get 25 uh a uh, million dollars per and then we're gonna start with 200 applicants and then we'll get a large rocket payload they never get earth sick food supply from passenger rockets is increased by 10 our time 10 and then rocket synthesized fuel cool and then our drones do better and we get an autonomous hub all right let's hop in there so now this is basically uh our first rocket now our first rocket is not going to have any colonists we need to send a bunch of drones we need to build our colony um and we need to get everything set up ready to go before we actually send people so we can change the name of this and we're going to call this uh the common one the common eh, do we want to call it the common one Maybe I want to change every name. So let's just call it the common. Eh, I almost maybe want to do a different. Like maybe, uh, what was the original name on it? Liberty? Liberty. Or or how about uh, Exploration 1? Exploration. We're going to give all our rockets a slightly different name. So we're going to actually start off with four prefab buildings. Now, anytime you select a different... Uh, anytime you select a different mission sponsor, you are going to get a different payload. And usually the payload is tuned to fit well with whatever mission sponsor you have. So they have us starting with four prefab buildings. Essentially, these are buildings that got built on Earth. And then when we put them up on Mars, they just they they will build super, super quickly. So we're going to start with two Sterling generators, which are essentially power. We're going to start with the moisturizer vapor, which is going to give us moisture. And then a drone hub, which helps control our drones, um, which is good. So I think I'm fine i'm probably not going to tweak any of this our cargo capacity is already maxed out the thing is our funding if we decide to pick buildings and stuff like that that's actually going to cost us more money so that's where that initial funding kind of comes in handy you'll notice that we're not starting with any food the reason we're not starting with any food is because once again we're not going to have any colonists to begin with so that food's just going to sit there so it's much more important for us to get all of these other things and i think i'm just going to roll with what we have we'll kind of explain it as it goes um I don't think I need any more drones. Concrete will be able to pick up. Same thing, metals will be able to pick up. And the thing is, food will actually be able to start making ourselves as well. Um, the other thing with food is when we send our colonists, we're going to get a ton of food because of our mission sponsored. So now at this point, what we can do is we can select anywhere on the planet and we can actually colonize it. And you'll notice that we have different resources and different threats all over. There are a couple different areas that give us, um, that are probably better, probably more ideal locations for us to start on. What's cool about this is instead of something like, you know, um, uh, 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 Civ 6, which has uh, different seeds that you can give people and uh, you can actually then settle and settle on the same kind of colony site. Uh, everyone is playing on the exact same map. So anyone who is playing a series right now, they can actually just type in these coordinates and actually start on the exact same spot I'm going to start in on. Now, what's different is uh, every one of these spots is going to look the exact same. So if you start your calendar, colony right here on uh, 3 South and 22 west it's going to have the same typography like all the terrain and everything is going to be the exact same however the resources are always randomly generated so even though you're going to start in the exact same spot the map may still play out completely different from you so i want to start in somewhat of an easy spot but not like too hard like i don't want to go with 110 difficulty like that seems a little difficult i wonder why that's so probably because of the rough terrain i'm assuming this one seems cool because it's in the it's in the uh the the slash that's on the ground um, okay, I'm looking for something like maybe a 40 or 50% difficulty bonus. There's a 35, there's a 60, there's a 30. 
Elysium Alpha. I kind of like that. Elysium Alpha. That one's 75. I, I could pick a random spot, but I don't really feel like trying to find an actual random spot. So where was Elysium Alpha? I think we're going to go there. We're going to start with quite a bit of concrete, decent amount of water, decent amount of metals. We're going to have some meteors, a little bit of cold waves, a little bit of dust storms, a little bit of uh, dust devils. The average altitude is negative 2,000 meters, so that's actually going to be pretty low compared to the sea level, quote unquote, on Mars. The mean temperature is negative 15 degrees Celsius. I don't know if that's hot or cold. It seems pretty normal. Yeah, actually, it seems almost pretty warm <laughs> compared to most of Mars. And then the typography is relatively flat. So we're going to go ahead and start. And so this is going to be a slight difficulty. It's not going to be super, super hard. I'm okay with that. The one thing, especially with city building games, is they can be really hard. Um, like, you could do one or two things wrong and completely screw over your entire colony. So, mission control log number one. Welcome to Mars. Everyone at mission control is impatient to see the rocket touching down and unloading its precious cargo. Our remotely controlled eyes and hands on the red planet, the drones and rovers. Uh, wait, our remotely controlled eyes and hands on the red planet, the... Oh, gotcha, gotcha, the cargo. Our goal is to secure a foothold for humanity by building the first Martian dome. This daunting endeavor will allow the brave pioneers, the founders, to settle on Mars and prove that the colony is sustainable. But until then, we have to make sure the colony has enough construction resources, water, oxygen, and power. So our mission sponsor is the International Mars Mission, and I am the inventor inventor okay so let's designate a landing spot okay first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pause the game uh so we need to designate a landing site for the rocket a promising area has already been scanned for your resources select the rocket from the highlighted area okay so you can go away so it has already scanned sector 12 really a promising sector all it has right now is quite a bit of metal and quite a bit of concrete however there are no water so at the, any point we could actually click on our rocket and actually land our rocket there the other thing is we could land our rocket blindly on any one of these sectors and you'll notice every one of the sectors has a buildable area which is how much of the terrain you can actually build on and then it also has that high chance that the sector contains blank so we actually probably want to find some water to begin with and now all this area is unexplored and so one of two things have to happen either a i have to um, actually explore the areas with sensor towers or what we can do is start shooting off the four uh, orbital probes the probe droids that we brought with us so i'm looking for an area that might have some water and then we're probably going to shoot off the probe droid okay so this one has metals water and concrete and we also have metals, water, and concrete over here with a 98% buildable area. So we're actually going to go ahead and so probes will instantly scan, deploy a probe. All right, so we're going to actually instantly scan this area. And that one actually only gave us um, anomalies. So there's only a little bit of metals there. All right, well, that sucks. Well, let's try the water here. So we do have water here, but we don't really have much of anything else. Uh, you really need concrete to begin with, which is probably why they told us to um, stay there. Is there any other water nearby? I think we only have four probes left. So let's do this. I'm gonna actually scan this territory right here and I'm gonna scan this territory right here. And the downside is, dang, I really wanted to see that one. Oh, actually, yeah, I really wanted to see that area right there. Okay, so unfortunately, we're not gonna have any water to begin with and we're gonna have to get our water from up there We do have the moisturizer or whatever, but you know So now at this point we can actually click on our rocket and we can tell our rocket to land wherever we want So the thing is if I try landing on any of these uh, Deposits you'll notice that it says it overlaps a deposit. I can still land my rockets there um, However, it's just kind of warning me. Hey, you know, you probably don't want to land there So we don't actually have a lot on this map for us actually build on so there really isn't a whole lot of concern we can pretty much land anywhere i guess um now the thing is anytime you land a rocket it does kick up dust so you kind of want to keep the rockets near your stuff but not like super close because the dust actually increases maintenance and stuff like that um let's just throw it down over here they'll probably be okay so the very first rocket from mars is going to come down here so milestone achieved we found water on mars cool uh, all right, so I guess these are just like achievements. Uh, we scanned a sector, cool. We have no active research. So now researching technology. So you'll notice right away off the get-go, how do I scroll through? How do I actually get down on this tech tree? Hello, Mr. Tech tree. How do I actually go over? I have no idea. There are a lot of techs, but here's the thing. How do I actually, there's more text this way, but I don't know how to actually go that way with the text. 
I can tab that way? <laughs> this seems like a really dumb idea. Huh. Maybe you have to actually have some tax... Oh, oh, gotcha. You just have to push to the side of the screen. There you go. So you'll notice that there are a ton of freaking texts. Now, the thing is, like any other game, the further you get on these texts, the more expensive they're going to be. Um, and you have to unlock, you know, one in the biotech tree to unlock the next and so on and so forth. Now, what's interesting is every single tech in every one of these trees is completely randomized. So if you start the game right now, you're going to have the exact you're going to have different texts than what I have. So we're going to start off with water reclamation, which basically drastically reduces water consumption in the dome which is kind of important for us since we don't have a source of water. We also have low G high rises, which it gives us apartment buildings, which are okay. We get drones and rovers move 25% faster. Uh, we could also get subsurface heating, which increases the local temp temperature in cold areas. Okay. And then we have social engineers and geologists have 10% work performance when working their specialists. We also have this breakthrough. So drone hubs no, re no longer require power or maintenance and it's straight up research right away. So I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, drones and rovers move 25% faster. So it needs a thousand science. We are researching 300 a day. So at the bottom of your screen, you'll see soul one. And this is essentially one day. Now, um, this isn't really like one day per se. It's more like one year, but essentially it's soul one. So I guess it's probably, you could probably just say it's soul one year. So Martian days consist of nearly 25 earth hours. Uh, essentially what I'm trying to get at is the time is about a year. So you'll send a rocket. It'll take about a, soul, uh, a day to arrive from earth. Uh, but once again, that's about one day here. Um, so the, equi the equivalence, I guess, is about a year is what I'm trying to get at. Um, all right. So back to science. We want to queue up a couple more. So I think I would rather let's go ahead and get the. Well, we actually don't need the productivity training yet because we don't have people. So let's actually go for the water reclamation. And that, and then apartments, I suppose. Do something like that. We'll queue up a couple just in case. Um, and then we also need to se select sectors to scan. So I want to scan these sectors that are all around the outside. And so these are basically going to start revealing these sectors over time. Um, but they are, um, they will take a little bit of time for that to actually happen. All right. So let's go ahead and unpause the game. We found that there are no resources in the sector. Uh, there goes our spaceship and we found a bunch of anomalies. Okay, cool So we can also speed up the game to times three, but I really would like to watch our rocket land Woo, and you can see we have our logo on the spaceship, which is quite nice Yay, all right, so pan I think I already got the controls. Okay, so our rovers are now officially coming down uh, Open the build menu B a large solar panel. I think I know all this already so these are our, our big main drones. Each one of these has a different job. And then we have our little drones here, which do the uh, most of our building and stuff like that. Okay, so over here, is it O? It is not O. Was it O? It's O. Okay, so let's pause the game. So O over here, we have our or overview. And so this is our entire colony overview. So you can see all the resources we have, all the basic resources we have, all the grid resources we have, how much research we have, how much funding we have. We can view all our colonists and we can view the traits of all our colonists. We don't have any colonists yet, so there you go. Now we also have three different rovers. We have the RC rover. Essentially, all of our drones have to be within range of either a drone bay uh, I think it was a drone bay. Is that the name of it? It is a drone hub. They have to be in range of a drone hub, an RC rover, or a spaceship. And you'll notice that around our spaceship... How do I zoom out without zooming out all the way? Can I just, like, zoom out a little bit? I guess this is as far out as I can go. I feel like I should be able to zoom out, zoom out, zoom out a little bit more. But anyways, you'll notice this big hexagon around our uh, around our spaceship. That's essentially the range that our drones can go. So if I send any of these little drones to build out here, they're going to basically tell me that they can't build out there. Um, basically, they won't ever be able to build out there. So uh, what else would be zoom? Oh, oh, that's actually pause. Okay. Yeah, let's not hit that button. Uh, okay, so then our RC drone, uh, I can basically put him out here, and you'll notice that he actually has a different... Is it our RC? RC transport. The transport transports metal. The explorer will uh, look at anomalies and stuff like that. And then, yeah, you're the one that does the range, but why can't I see your range? 
Maybe because you don't have any drones? No, you do have four drones. Eh, all right, I don't know. So let's go ahead and start building some buildings. Uh, first thing I want to throw down is we're actually going to throw down the drone hub. And you can see the uh, space that the drone hub is going to cover. I would like it to overlap a little bit with the spaceship, but not a whole, whole lot. Um, so we're going to put it... So you see, if I try going way over here, it says it's too far from working drone commander. Essentially, I can't build over there because none of our drones can reach there and still be within range. So we'll do something like this. Um, because we do want to go ahead and throw down some buildings here on sensor tower tunnel. Let's see. Power production. Okay, I want to get some concrete uh, extractors. Now, how do I rotate this? Okay, you click the middle. So you'll notice that there is a huge... Uh, a source of, 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 what is this one called? This is concrete. So, concrete's how we do all of our building and so on and so forth. So, I do want to go ahead and throw down a concrete extractor just to start getting some concrete built. You can see that um, it's an average grade, where this one's actually a very high grade. So, this is actually going to mine a little bit quicker. So, we'll probably start over here then with the super high grade. And as we hover, you can see that uh, it's changing the amount. Um, based on how much we get now we can actually put multiple It's actually too far from the working drone commander. Oh, yeah, I can't build it because I need to wait for my drone hub to go So let's go ahead and get our drones going Um, the other thing we can go ahead and throw down right away is we can start throwing down some storage So those would be under infrastructure perhaps resources now, there we go. So we have universal deposit, we have metals deposit, we have concrete deposit. I'm gonna throw down a metal deposit. All these little rocks that are hanging out are basically metals. So if our drones are not building, what they can actually be doing is starting to collect all these metals. So I don't really know how we're gonna play out our colony yet. Probably gonna put our dome probably down here a little bit, but let's go ahead and get a metals. And then while that's going, let's go ahead and also get a couple universal deposits around as well. So something like that. Is there anything else? We got the concrete. Wait, was this a metals deposit or was this concrete? That was a metals deposit. So let's actually put a concrete deposit as well. Although I probably want the concrete deposit... Do something like this, because I'd want it near... Eh, let's just delete that. What do I do? Eh, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so you're going off and you're doing your little scanny thing. That's fine. You are moving the drones. And so you can see now, all of this is within range of this drone commander. Um, but I really need this building built first. You'll notice these little cute guys. Look at how awesome they are. Yeah, you go build, man. So we're going to go ahead and put ourselves on speed three because speed one is so freaking slow. All right, so we're going to finish that. So now we have a lot more range on our drones. So what we can do is come back here, go to our production, and we can start building a concrete. And so I would like... Probably something like this, because we will want to overlap a little bit. So let's try it. Let's start here. And it says no cable connection. Essentially, what it's telling us is we don't have any power yet. So the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to start getting some power going. So we got wind turbines and then we have solar panels. So everything in the game has a maintenance. So you'll notice every one of these require metal for maintenance. Now, the thing is, I don't have any metals to begin with, do I? Unless you got some metals. No, you didn't bring any metals with you, so we actually can't even provide maintenance? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. All these little rocks are metals, so we're good there. Okay, I got scared there for half a second. So, number one, they cost metals, and then they also cost metals for maintenance. So, we really need to start gathering some of these metals so we can actually uh, start building some of these things. Now, the wind turbines instead require machine parts as well as concrete. So, the concrete we're going to start getting from there. The metals, or rather, the machine parts we're going to have to bring back from Earth, at least right now, until we start building them. You can also see how much production each one's going to do. This is going to give you a base production of two for the small one, uh, or we can build the bigger one, which is going to give us production of five. Now, the small one actually is a bit of a better deal uh, because it's a uh, cost of one. And so with three, you can actually get the same uh, base production. However, you're going to end up spending more on maintenance long term. So let's go ahead and instead just throw down a large one to begin with. And oh, wait, wait, wait. What was the button for it? Was it, was it shift to build multiple ones? Yes. And so we can go ahead and start building down multiple. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw down three to begin with. Something like that. All right, now let's go. And then once these get built, we can start building some power lines and we might as well keep it rolling at this point. Let's go speed two. 
Uh, so we can start doing power cables. And so we're going to take our power cables and we're going to run the power cables over to this building. And they don't have to be right on top of it. They just have to be right next to it. So something like that. And so now these three power generators are going to actually power the concrete extractor. Now, one thing you should know, the large panels have a base production of five power. The concrete production, concrete extractor, only uses five. So we're gonna be basically producing three times the amount. But keep in mind, at nighttime, what's gonna happen? These guys aren't gonna be used. By the way, what are you guys doing? You're still going back to the ship. How many drones? You have four drones here. I think you guys are just dropping someone stuff off now. So someone joked we found kryptonite. It was greenish yellow hue of the barrel crystals. So the contrast with the red Martian dust made them appear almost alien, even as if they wouldn't make any of the colonists superhumans. They would surely give us almost supernatural powers. Our plans of mission control include the in introduction of long-term nuclear energy solution for the groaning colony, and the beryllium that we would produce from these minerals would be an immense help in the difficult mission. We would encase the nuclear fuel rod of our nuclear reactors in beryllium and make good use of incredible mechanical, chemical, and nuclear properties. Technologies in the physics tree have a 10% boost. That is freaking awesome. So that means everything in the physics? What was it? Yeah, it's the physics, because these are all 1,000, are now 10% cheaper. That's actually really good to have. So uh, our Mr. RC Explorer is now neutral. We do actually have a science up here, so we could actually come up here. I think you can make it without, because um, they do have a certain level of power. Um, let's actually hold up a second. Let's get our power going. Actually, let's just have you come up here, go recharge on the power line, and then we'll go from there. So we got metal. Uh, is this our universal depot? It is, and they're basically dropping off everything from the ship. So we have all these rovers right now, rovers right now dropping off stuff from the ship. Uh, then we have a couple rovers at rovers actually starting to build over here. So, okay, one thing I should note, like I said, we have a bunch of power right now, um, but unfortunately, Oh, these guys aren't connected. Ah, noted. So you need to do something like this so that you connect the whole way. So the problem with this is we do have all this power going, but we're basically having a big waste of power because um, um, we're not using it. So what we want to go ahead and do is start throwing down a couple batteries so we can actually store power. So this is like every other game ever. So put you like here. It's shift, Brian. Hold shift. We'll do something like that. We're going to have three batteries on this power grid. Now, the thing is, this is going to kick up dust. Any of your extractors kicked up, kick up dust. So this uh, may get a little bit dirty. So we may end up having to um, repair it a little more than we would like. Okay, so we're going to actually send you up here to this anomaly, please. Go ahead and do that. Now, the other thing is, I also have this transport up here. This transport can help me out right now because we can have you go load the resources and I want you to load all... No, 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 no. Ah, oh, wrong button. Actually, just create a transport route. Can we do it this way? Maybe. Let's do load... No, no, no. Now, cancel. Cancel everything, dang it. Let's do load resources. I want you to load the metals and then I want you to put the metals here. No, I think I have to do it the other way. All right, let's try it this way. Let's see, can I tell you load metals and then I want you to come here and put metals is this symbol. I want you to do that and that. Let's see if that works. Okay, so we're basically at this point just kind of waiting for all our drones to finish building the concrete extractor. I did not want you to do that, sir. I want you to do this to here. And I don't want to select you anymore. Thank you. <laughs> so now that it's nighttime, you see our solar uh, panels have gone down. So if we actually hit on O, you'll notice that we're not actually doing any power right now. And part of that is because um, all these guys are solar panels. Oh, meteor strikes. That's going to be fun. So we scanned an anomaly. Cool. That was a bonus for us. Uh, they are slowly starting to drop the metals here, and then someone's going to start building it. So we could have gotten a prefab from Earth for this building, which means we wouldn't have to collect all these resources. Um, you'll notice that they're actually collecting the metal from these actual uh, 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 just rocks that are sitting here. So 
from the surface deposit. Okay, so now that they have enough resources, this guy is actually going up. Uh, however, this guy currently has no power because all our solar panels are off. So we basically need to wait for daytime for these guys to get going. Research now, one thing we can do to actually counteract these solar powers is we can put up wooden panels. And so now that he is um, getting power, he's gonna actually start just producing concrete. Now that we're producing concrete, guess what we can do? We can build some wind turbines. And let's actually do it like this. Dang it, Brian, every time. I gotta get used to holding shift. I'm not used to that. And so we're gonna hold that. We're gonna build three wind turbines. And essentially, this should be enough power for us for quite a while. Hopefully they go ahead and start building the batteries. What did the batteries actually cost? I actually don't know. So they cost three, uh, three concrete, which is fine. And then two polymers which the polymers, remember, we only got from Earth, so we don't actually have a lot of polymers, so we gotta be careful. We also have sterling generators, which generate a bunch of power for you initially. However, I'm gonna save them for a little bit later, so that's fine. Now, what else can we do? We can start generating oxygen. Oxygen is uh, uh, gonna be necessary for our colony. Unfortunately, we're not there yet. Uh, we ended up doing our first research as well, so we got the low G drive completed, which basically gives our drones and rovers moving quicker. So now the RC transport harvests resources faster, maximum storage. That's actually really, really good. And that's actually probably more necessary. I'm actually going to put you here and then the apartments. We almost finished the water reclamation, so there's no reason to actually get that going. So what else? We really can't do a whole lot. Um, well, actually, you know what I can do? I can throw a sensor up. So sensor, let's see, where is the sensor located? Uh, rare metals extractor, sterling generator. Sensor tower. So now what the sensor is going to do is the sensor is going to actually help scan the uh, outline areas a little bit quicker. So you notice that it's scanning at a very slow rate. Anytime you put sensors down, the sensors are going to scan the nearby areas. Basically, however close your zone is to that area, it's going to speed it up significantly, like up to like 400%. So now we needed power for our guy, right? So. You're currently going, so if we zoom back out, you'll notice we are now sensor tower boosts researching this at 334%, 248, 297, 225, 253. So these are all going a heck of a lot quicker, which is nice. Uh, water lock reclamation, which was what again? Uh, okay, gotcha. So now we can do magnetic fil filtering, so our oxygen production is increased by 50%. That's actually really nice. I'm gonna queue that one up as well. Uh, where is our RC Explorer? You don't really have anything else, so I want you to come back home. Sector scanned. RC Explorer, I want you to come back home and charge back up. So, oh yeah, here's the other thing. These guys actually produce waste. You'll notice two things. Number one, they start putting the metal I want out. So they start putting uh, the concrete slabs in the back. As soon as this fills up, the extractor is going to be done. So we need our rovers to constantly be picking it up and taking it over to the, the dumping spot. The other thing it produces is this waste rock, which we can't do anything with yet. So we're going to go ahead and build ourselves a dumping zone, a dumping site for this stuff. And I want it to hold down shift so I can build a couple of these something like that so now it's gonna take this rock and put it over there so all right we're good there do we want what I probably want is a concrete depot nearby and so the idea is instead of driving this concrete all the way over there we're gonna actually drop it off there uh, I don't mind having concrete over here as well and we may end up having to use our I'm gonna put you over here for a second. We may end up using our dude here. Did you actually grab anything? No, you didn't actually grab anything. So I think what I'm gonna have you do is set up a trade route where I want you to grab the resources from there. You're gonna grab the concrete and you're gonna come unload the resources there. Wait, is that the concrete? No, that was not the concrete. I want you to grab the resources from there. Just cancel, cancel everything you're doing. Okay, sorry, grab concrete, please. And then you're gonna drop off concrete there. So I want him to grab all the concrete and just move it over there more to the center area of our colony. He's not really doing anything else right now, so that's fine. Um, our RC Explorer, we just don't have any anomalies or anything to explore. We're kind of limited in everything that we're trying to do. Okay, so one thing I wanna start doing is I wanna start building power lines down to the south. We could actually get more metal extraction going up. I just don't think it's really necessary. 
We'll do something like that for now. And the other thing we want to start building... Why is my B not working? B. Okay. What else can we start building? We can start building... We can't do any of these extractors yet because we don't have... We can do a fuel refinery, but we need either a prefab or we have to research the technology. Um, power cables, solar panels. We're good on power. Infrastructure, we have sensor towers. We can actually do a recharge station so that the... Because right now, anytime uh, these guys want to recharge, they have to drive all the way back to the spaceship. So you know what? It might actually be a bad idea to actually have a research, a recharge station over here. I've not actually seen anyone build that yet. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Um, tunnels basically allow you to cross the area a lot quicker. Um, don't really care about any of that. Uh, so what we probably want to start looking for is let's start getting some uh, water and some water production as well as some... Uh, oxygen production so I want to keep you a little bit away from that guy so we're gonna build a moxie which is going to generate oxygen and then we want to do a moisturizer vapor vapor which is going to produce water we're gonna put these guys right next to each other um, probably rotate you so we can actually do something like that and we're gonna need to end up building pipes so we can actually transport the water and oxygen so pipes I don't know what the hockey is but we can actually start a pipe here and we can actually start a pipe here and we're gonna start just bringing the pipes down our line and we're just gonna do something like that for now uh, the other thing we should do is since we're gonna be generating oxygen we want an oxygen tank so we can actually store the oxygen like the battery so we're not wasting it and we'll probably put that right across the way and then same thing with the water tower Let's do something like that. And we want to put these guys like right next to each other. So this is gonna be where all our oxygen and water are gonna come from. Second and so scan. really we're almost to the point where we can start building a dome. So now at any point we can build a basic dome and this is where our people are gonna live. Inside the dome then we have a bunch of different buildings we can build. We can build living quarters, apartments, nurseries, playgrounds, schools, research labs. And these are all buildings that fit inside the dome. Uh, and then we even have, uh, what are these things called again? Dome spires. So these actually go in the center of the dome and they have unique effects. This is the one we researched, which recycles, <coughs> excuse me, it recycles up to 70% of the water to reuse in the dome. And then you also have parks and all that kind of fun stuff, fountains, and all this makes our people happier. So once we get our water going, so you see right now we still have a power surplus. We also have an oxygen surplus and we have a water surplus. The one thing we need to note is that our basic dome does what? It needs one water, it needs one oxygen. Right now we have one water, we have one oxygen. So, or two oxygen. So we're actually doing really good when it comes to that. Um, also, by the way, both of these are saying, hey, you don't have anything connected because basically we don't have these buildings built yet. Uh, so essentially it's like, hey, you built this building that's generating oxygen, but the oxygen is just going nowhere. So essentially that's what it's blinking at us. So we could theoretically go ahead and grab a dome to begin with. And I don't know if that's a bad idea. I don't think it's a bad idea. Rare metals, we can't do any of these rare metals yet. I guess we might as well. The only thing is we're probably gonna start wanting more power, but we have the sterling generators. So let's see, where do we wanna actually put our dome down? Where Where is your area? So maybe we actually want to put you, whoopsie, not research. I think we actually want to throw our dome, eh, our dome down up here. It's uneven terrain. So we could actually put it right here. I don't want you to merge with that. The other option is we could go down over here. Just like smack dab in the middle. And that's probably the best bet. We just don't have any... This is kind of a crap start, to be honest with you. But it's okay. We'll make it work. I think something like this. And so this is where our dome is going to be. And this is where our people are going to first settle. So we have a pretty congested area. That's okay. We are still scanning areas. But as you notice, we still haven't found anything else around us to actually... Uh, we have water up there, and that's about it. And then we have some concrete. So there's not a whole lot going on in this area right now, which is funny because this zone was actually pretty high, I thought. Mm, maybe I was wrong. 
So, all right, when they, they're gonna slowly start building the dome, but you'll notice it uses a lot, a lot of concrete, a lot of metal, a lot of polymer. Question is, do I actually have enough polymer? So we have seven polymer total. So we only have nine polymers. So we're actually probably not gonna have enough polymers to actually build this, it looks like. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna actually need to request a rocket, I think from Earth with more polymers. Now the question is, there it is. I was like, where's the actual button for it? Did I just freeze the game? I just froze the game. There we go. Okay, whoa, that was scary. Okay, so we're gonna select a cargo rocket and load the desired payload. Now, we have three of four available rockets. The reason we only have three of four is because one of them right now is sitting here on Mars. Now, the thing to note is these, um, these rockets are slowly refueling itself and eventually they're gonna fill up and then we can send them back to Earth uh, so then we can send them back to Mars with a different payload. But right now, um, we need a cargo rocket because we're gonna need some more polymers. So I'd like to go ahead and just grab a bunch of polymers. Any more prefab buildings? I think we want more, uh, I think I'm gonna grab two more moisture vapor, um, vaporators just because at this point, we can't uh we can't mine water ourselves so we're gonna have to do that uh i don't know if we really need any of these we might as well grab a fuel refinery just to save us a little bit of time and then uh we still have quite a bit of capacity left i think i will go ahead and grab a few more drones i don't know if there's a downside to having too many drones but the drones basically are going to allow us to go quicker i don't really need explorers uh, nor do I need transports at this point. I could grab another transport to help start transporting goods. And that might not be a bad idea for us at some point. Electronics. I guess let's just grab a bunch more machine parts. And let's go up. To, how much can we go? Let's go like 80. Let's do something like 70. 50. Let's go 50, 50, and 20. What if we did something like that? And then we go 25. And then there you go. So we have five more drones coming. We have 50 polymers, 50 machine parts, and 25 electronics. So we're going to go ahead and we want to rename this. Uh, what did we call the first one? Exploration? Friendship? Uh, let's call this uh, uh, Destiny. Whoopsie. What the heck? Why? Why are you not Des? Why are you not letting me type over? I can't hit backspace, guys. <laughs> uh, what if I hit insert? Can I type this way? Nope. Insert doesn't work. So how can I actually rename these rockets then? Is this a bug? Destiny. But I don't think delete doesn't work. So destiny friendship. Yeah, literally none of my buttons are working. So I can type, but no i don't know what i just did i hit a different view all right well it's gonna be friendship one go ahead what if i hit rename nope cancel all right congratulations all right so we have our first rocket incoming from earth well actually our second rocket uh we also have our dome getting built uh and then we have our oxygen and water you notice that the prompts are gone so you'll see here that we actually have oxygen we're producing two we're water we're producing one but you'll also notice that we have stored oxygen eight stored water three so we're gonna have a little bit of a backlog before we ever uh, have a need with our dome being constructed so i think we're in a great starting spot i hope you guys are enjoying it definitely drop a like or a comment let me know any suggestions you guys might have and then as always hit the subscribe button join the game come in show your support and i will see you guys next episode bye